Welcome back, everybody, to Big Black and Unsuccessful. I'm Stubb D. P. CEO. What's happening, people? What's going on with y'all out in this world? I'm pretty sure y'all know it's summertime, so it's hot, man. Hot everywhere. We down in South Carolina, it's like 90 degrees every day. What's going on with you, man? Same old thing, man. Different day, different times. Word, word, word. You yeah, have a good uh, fourth and uh, Juneteenth and all the other stuff that people no, do. I'm not in none of that bullshit. I feel that. Not a fan. Everybody good. Yours. Everybody cooling, man. Everybody cooling. It's another day trying to make it out here, man. But uh, you know we normally talk about world things, but you know I ain't really speak to you when I came in here. So what's what's up, man? Feel like you got some things on your mind, or, or is, is it just uh? job and just trying to get rest. That and it's fucking hot. It's hot. Right. It don't make no goddamn sense. I ain't gonna lie to you, man. It don't make no sense. Listen, I, I normally be chilling, right? Because, uh, you know, my, my house stayed pretty cool for the most part. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And damn, get in the car, and now my car starting to do that shit where if they ain't riding, it ain't cool. It ain't cool. Mm-hmm. I'm like, man, I don't got time. No, I don't got time, no money to be fucking with this yeah, shit. Yeah, you know, I ain't got time for that shit. Don't and wait we, till it get hot. And we up, and we're in the house, but we're upstairs, so Bert. you know what that means. Bert. This really, we're upstairs, but it's really not part of the main house. But Jesus Christ. Yeah, man. That's a. Uh, I don't know that 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 uh, goes along with, you know. I guess life and everything that's going on at the moment, everybody opening back up, or was trying to open back up from the virus. And I ain't gonna lie to y'all, man, I'm kind of tired of talking about this virus and listening about this virus and all the other bullshit that's going on in the world. Usually you would have a mixture of bad shit and good shit. Mm -hmm. And this has all been bad shit. Yeah, it's just been bad shit on and on and on, and it make it hard to sit down and even talk about this shit because you don't be wanting to be in that vibe. Nope. You know what I'm saying? But it it's hard to uh, it's subjects that's hard to avoid if that makes sense. Especially for us being, you know what I'm saying, black men, being fathers of black uh, women or girls growing into women, mm-hmm. being uh, fathers of black boys growing into men and having Men that we already done raised, you know what I'm saying? That's that's out here raising their own. Right. God damn, boys. That's yeah. some deep ass shit. I, you know. Funny, but it's I'm truth. just freestyling that thought. That shit is crazy. It's the truth, though. Damn. That's what age you are now. Yeah, man. That's that's serious. Then you got uh, you got your parents that you gotta be mindful of. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Even if they ha- handling their own business, you still got to be mindful of them. So, it, you know, it's, it's a it's a lot of worries at this point. You know what I'm saying? Me being a 41-year-old man, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, that's a lot. That just hit me, so y'all forgive me. That just hit me <laughs> in, that, in that moment, stating that. That just hit me just now, and I'm like, ah, okay, okay. This is where we at. You know what I'm saying? But uh, I did see I, I seen some uh, some brothers practicing their two A rights. They two what what two A rights? You know what I'm saying? What's that that uh, Second Amendment. You know what I'm saying? Like you know that beautiful the NRA represent. Yeah, well, that don't apply to a lot of us, and they purposely did that so it wouldn't apply to a lot of us. So. But I seen them out there. Lucky, lucky, lucky them. I seen them out there, and you know what I'm saying. For I, I understand for uh, fellas who got, you know, felonies or certain things on their record that they can't, uh, you know, practice that right. But I, you know, if you can get it expunged, man, get it expunged. Now is the time to. Uh, they make that hard to do. A lot of people make that shit sound easy, but that's hard to do. I that. mean, listen, I never been through. It. You know what I'm saying? So I don't. You know, the only thing I could do is. Hope to talk to somebody who had the experience and they actually speak on it. I've had plenty of experience with it, but I don't want to speak on it because they full of shit. They got their people too. And, right. and, you know, it's just hard to do. 
I feel you. I'm not even going to sit here and lie. And that shit is not easy. It takes a lot of money and it's hard to do. Word. Especially if you've been in trouble in multiple counties in South Carolina. That makes it really hard to do. If you've just been in trouble in one little county, you get something expunged like that. Multiple. Yeah. One county denies it. You're not going to get it. Trust me. I, I can't speak on nobody else, but I know what happened in my situation. So it is what it is. The way I view it, man, like uh, anytime you're trying to do something where it involves government, they're going to make it hard. Mm-hmm. It don't matter if it's uh, shit, the DMV. You know what I'm saying? One of the simplest things. Take a number. We're going to call you. We're going to call your number. You know what I'm saying? And you come up there and you handle your business. Like, it couldn't be no more straightforward than that, in my opinion. Right. You give us the forms in advance. You know what I'm saying? It shouldn't take nothing to call a number. But, right. you know, like, that'd be one of the most, you know, craziest processes in the world that don't have to be. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And that's probably like one of the simplest forms of government. Right. So imagine when you're talking about records that you got to deal with from police officer because the police mm-hmm. got to write a report. You know what I'm saying? The precinct got to have the report. Mm-hmm. You know, all levels of government dealing with it, of course, like they don't have nothing to give. Right. That's why a police officer can get fired, still live in the house and go right down the street and get, get another, another job. job. And now you're right back on the street policing the same people who they cause harm to. Which is crazy to me. They still doing it, man. It's, is it really changing? Or, I mean, it's just a little wake-up call here and there, man. It's just weird. It's weird. Well, I think they're doing band-aids, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, you go uh, look at real estate, they won't call a bedroom, master bedroom. Mm-hmm. Or they knock down the mm-hmm. statue, you know what I'm saying? Like, they took the statue down here in Charleston, South Carolina. You take the statue down, that's cool. But take down the systems that oppress the people yeah, who the really. statue was meant to oversee. And then we can we can have some progress while you're still dealing with the same system and the same rules and the same laws. And don't say you can't do it because you a city official. You the city board. Mm-hmm. Plenty of people was against, you know, taking down the statue, but you still took it down. Same thing with the state house. Plenty of people was against taking down that flag, but they still took it down. What does that do? That's my point. So if you got the power to do that, and that's a somewhat unpopular or in the middle decision, that means you have the power to sit down and have a and and make a decision on something that can influence so many people's lives in a positive way, more so than just taking down a statue. So you could go in and you could say, all right, well, we ain't gonna, we gonna stop just giving contracts to white companies. We gonna stop, you know what I'm saying, uh, stopping certain people from living in certain areas. We gonna stop holding up people because they look this way. You know what I'm saying? Like you can change those policies that represent those things and make life so much better than just taking out a statue. Yeah, but then you're still gonna have niggers. You're still gonna have some niggers that's gonna mess that up for everybody too. Just like what's going on around the world, just like what's going on now. Okay, so now the white folks are getting in trouble for being racist or overtly racist, this, that, and the third. And now we got Negroes out here just literally going, picking with these same, picking with people to make it look like now they started it with just calling police on us for nothing. But now you got people out here going to pick with them. And the one girl and her daughter get the damn gun put in their face. Now they mad. But you pick with that lady. But did you see the whole video? Yeah, I saw the whole video. So you know it was a start to it before the video yeah. started. That shit shouldn't even have got that far. It shouldn't have. Now, I... Sister, sister, gal, and daughter shouldn't have been... I sit, I sit they with shouldn't you. Have been, they shouldn't have been around that lady car. None of that bullshit. That's I, I feel the sentiment. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the point, though. The problem with these people is... They gonna come to you and say, "Hey, young man, you got the tattoo on your arm. Can you please cover up your tattoo?" And then you say, "Ma'am, this is my tattoo. Can you leave me alone, please?" Mm-hmm. And then they get unruly. And then you put your phone up to say, "Y'all see this lady being unruly with me?" Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Now, all of a sudden, you know what's going on in the world just as well as I do. So you start walking out the building. Start walking to your car. Why are you walking to your car? Because you don't fuck with me. Oh, for people who don't like me being bold. Let me chill out. You don't mess with me. You don't harass me where I'm at, where I was at peace. And now that I'm calling you out for it, now you want to run out the building. Okay, cool. I'm dumb if I follow you out the building. Because I don't know what you got out the building. See, that's what me and you, we agree on that totally. Because I don't know what you got outside. When, they, when people running outside, what are they doing? Most of the time, people run into the trunk. They run into something. You know what I'm saying? So, in that point, if you got the lady inside, you don't got to follow her outside. But, I mean, what the lady did was, she was pulling out the gun. The guy did back into her, into the uh, mother. He did. It's right on the video. You know what I'm saying? Now, when the lady got the gun right dead in your face, why are you holding up the phone, standing up there, talking to your daughter? Why not back the way and get the fuck on out the way and call the police or whatever you're going to do? Why stay there with a gun in your face holding the phone just for the moment? That part ain't made no sense to me. But just because you got a gun, don't mean you pull a gun. I guess. <clears throat> if that's the case, we all be pulling guns. I guess. It is what it is. Y'all better leave the people alone. And the people better leave y'all alone. It's getting ugly. Yeah. It's getting ugly. I Tell think that. I think that uh the the problem with most moderate black people, right? Is that we can admit that slavery and Jim Crow and mass incarceration and all of these different things leading up to this point has been wrong. We can admit that maybe more things should have been done to stop this system. And then when the ball start rolling and people start doing things, then some of these moderate black people be like, well, hold up, you ain't had to go that far. But, like, you still got to look at how far they went. You know, I'm sorry, slavery, raping. You enslaved somebody, you ain't had to rape them. I mean, they already working for you. They already your servant. They ain't had to be your property. They could have still been enslaved people. They, they ain't have to be... A whole nother category that takes them man, away. Yeah, man. man. Them people didn't think about people. nobody like that. Of course not. So what does it? They don't. They didn't care. They didn't care, and that's ingrained in some of the um, ancestors or whatever, however you put it, man. People don't give a shit, man. These people still don't give a shit about you, me, them. Oh, they us. still don't. They don't give a shit. They still don't. But what they do care about is they care about property. They care about. Uh, reputation. See, I be a racist all day. But if you know I'm a racist, I have a problem with that. That's the reason why most Trump voters didn't tell people they were voting for Trump. You got some proud ones that got the sign in their yard. And for those people, I salute you. But then you got the closeted ones that sitting there speaking against it. For every post, they saying, ah, oh, down with Donald Trump. He doesn't stand with women. And then those same women went and vote for him. But how can you be, man, listen, this is why I don't like talking about this kind of stuff because, god damn, you can't have it both ways because when, <laughs> this shit is fucking ridiculous, man. You can't have it both ways. Of course you're going to have people like that. And they, and they feel like they deserve to be like that because after the Obama years, when goddamn everybody been black this, black that, my president black, my Lambo blue this shit, this, that, this shit. Mm -hmm. Obama ain't did shit for us. That's who? Some pundits claim he didn't do nothing. Is it true? Is it? I don't know. I don't know because what goes on in Washington really doesn't affect me at this level. What affects me at this level is Mayor Sumney and right. Mayor Tecklenburg and Mayor Collins and some of them. But here's the thing. Uh, 
Obamacare affected your family? The Affordable Care Act affected your no, family? No, no, it didn't affect my family. So you Every, still have to be able to afford that. No, nah, not necessarily. No, really? If you can't afford it, it, it puts certain people, the poorest people, and maybe your family don't fit in that category, but some of my family members are some of the poorest people. Like, they was able to go. But they still got Medicaid. But that Medicaid. Was, it was expanded. That's the point. People who work jobs who couldn't get that could then get that. See what I'm saying? Like, they don't call that part the Affordable Care Act, but that's what happened. Uh-huh. Even here, you had the governor decided, uh, Nikki Haley decided she wasn't taking it. Okay. But it's not affordable to me. So the, the, the point about it is, yeah, if you are a person who uh, doing well for themselves or doing better than bad, then you might not see certain things that would change that was set up. You know what I'm saying? Like things might look way worse than they was because it looked like all of a sudden it was open season on black people during Obama's time. Well, why do you think that was? Why do you think it was convenient to do that on that person's watch? Why do you think it was convenient to hold the Supreme Court? Why do you think it was convenient to stop him from putting anything forward? You know what I'm saying? And that's just the point. I think a lot of times black people say President Obama did nothing for black people, forgetting that he was the president of the United States. Now, what we got now is a president that's doing something for white racist people, which is, and let me take that, a person that's doing stuff for white people, because it don't just affect white racist people, it affects white people. He's doing things to better his people, whereas the presidency before that wasn't supposed to be about your people. It was supposed to be about American people. And then what people don't understand about politics is you get what you ask for. What did you ask for? You didn't ask for anything. Every time somebody bring up that point, I say, what did you ask for? Did you write the man? Did you call somebody? Did you write your congressperson? Did you ask for anything? Because the LGBTQ community, they asked for gay rights marriage. That's what they asked for. They lobbied for it. They asked for it. And they got it. You know, President Obama ain't signed up to be nobody's daddy. So he can't go in there like, oh, well, my children need to get this. No, like it's politics. So you, for one, all you do is sign it. So you have to actually ask for it, say you want it. Then the Congress starts writing out laws. Then the people rally. Then the president go out and rally support for it. And then it's voted on. And then they put it on his desk and he signed it. Or like he is me known as the gay rights president. I've never heard that. I don't know, man. I don't know. It doesn't matter. What'd you ask for? Because you preach it on it. I ain't preaching. I'm just speaking. What'd you ask for? Listen, that's the thing. I didn't ask for nothing. I was with everybody else. I was celebrating having a black president. My president is black. That's crazy. We all were celebrating that. So that's my point. Now we all, because if you go ask people, what did you vote for Obama for? Okay. What was his platform? What did he run on? Man, I don't know. I just voted for him because he was black. Okay. That's the stupidest shit in the world. And they not, and they got percentages on that from polls that show the amount of people that voted for him just because he was black. Now they don't even know how that. many how many people voted for goddamn Trump because they didn't want to vote for a woman. There's a percentage in that too. Yeah. But it was sure enough to win. Yeah, that's my point. My point is people always gonna vote their bias. People gonna watch the television show that they bias to. You know what I'm saying? Like somebody who want to hear about all the stupid shit going on, all the killing and all, and all of that stuff, they going to tune in to CNN and MSNBC. People who want to hear that the president doing a good job, they going to tune in to Fox. Like people always going to go with their bias. Everybody, everybody has a bias and they're going to roll with it. Charlemagne to tell you I'm rooting for everybody. That's bias. Everybody is going with their bias. The problem is when you have laws set to control a bias. There shouldn't be a law that's racist. 
I don't give a damn if a person is racist. You can hate me every goddamn day. You can go in your house and say that nigger, that goddamn nigger. You can be black and say that stupid ass nigger. I don't give a fuck. Just don't then be the judge that's judging whether or not I should pay $800 for a ticket or judging whether or not I should go to jail for 30 days like the person before me who was white or a year like the person before him who was black. Okay, well, you got to change the system from within. And that's all I'm saying. Take y'all ass to school and get your juris doctor. But we, but we doing that. That's been done. That's where we at right now. But guess what? You can't just be in the system. You can't just be a judge. You can't just be a police commissioner. You can't just be a mayor like in Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? You have to have civil unrest. You have to have the people in the streets fighting for change. Man, listen. I've been watching this shit since the beginning. Right. I see more white folks. Really. I see more young white folks mm -hmm. out there protesting than Negroes. And guess what? That's crazy. That's what was needed. Is it? Is it what was needed? How many black people would have been locked up if it was just a plenty of black people out there plenty. protesting? And they probably wouldn't have got locked up. They probably got buried. They would have been buried. Right now, they're talking about, oh, 10 years if you deface a statue. Mm -hmm. 10 years if you're protesting. You know what I'm saying? They're dropping bombs and shooting people with rubber bullets. Why are they doing that? They're trying to scare these white people off the street. Why? Because if white people fighting for the rights of black people, that's a fucking problem. It's always been black people in the riots. It's always been black people protesting. It's always been black people in Selma. It's always been black people. White people ain't never realized that what their ancestors did was wrong no, it's and always, they still benefit No, from. I, I disagree now. It's always been some. Well, get it. During the it, whole thing now. Don't it's get it always twisted. Been some now. Don't get it twisted. Some of them got killed with us. Now. When we talking about now, we saying that it's majority white. Mm -hmm. When we talking about back then, I'm just saying it was majority black. But that, but that, but I hate to be that one, but that that Black Lives Matter don't don't speak for me because I don't even I don't even roll with them like that. Organization, I know nothing about. Now the term, the term yes. is what people stand on. See the organization, I ain't never donated to Black Lives Matter. You know what I'm saying, like. You know, it's no knock to them because I don't know. That's my ignorance. That's my level of ignorance. I don't know about your organization. I know what a YouTube video showed. I know what memes say. And I know what uh, Linda Sarsar, I think that's her name. I'm sorry if I'm getting it wrong. And, and the other sister, um, I, know, I know the women who started it, what their platform is and what they stand for and what they do around this nation, going to different places, different marches off of donations. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know what they do, but the term should not be disrespectful to anybody. Black lives should matter. And you know what I'm saying? It shouldn't take away from somebody who... I don't give a damn if you say uh, your white life matter. If you're in a climate where a bunch of people just killing a bunch of white people. Mm -hmm. I believe that... Uh, I believe that the situation with Hitler, that was a White Lives Matter moment. <laughs> yeah. I mean, let's be real about it. They was under attack. They was under attack because of how they look. <laughs> okay. That was a White Lives Matter moment. If hashtags existed, you know what I'm saying? That was a White Lives Matter moment. <laughs> now, you can run out there and say, well, damn, he went, he went going at everybody. He was trying to make the whole world be blonde, blue eyes. He, he wanted to exterminate that particular race. Right. So that's my point. That had nothing to do with nothing else but how they look, who they were. You see what I'm saying? That was a White Lives Matter moment. Whereas if you want to talk, oh, well, they just killed a seven-year-old in Chicago. Some of the saddest shit that I be hearing, my nigga. Just on the real, like, that's extremely sad. But don't come and say that's black on black crime, because what it is, is crime. Yeah, it's crime, just like you got that stupid motherfucker. 
throw a concert in goddamn Greenville, his partner want to shoot off the stage, kill two people and injure 12. Y'all niggas is crazy. That's crime. That's crime. That ain't black on black. That's fucking crime. That's crime. And when, I can't stand that term. When you get rid of these market employees, because they were selling super predators back then, Hillary Clinton, uh, goddamn the cat running for president now, uh, Biden, they was and, and Clinton, they were selling super predators. So, so in order to sell super predators, because that's what politicians do, they sell things. So in order for me to sell you this policy, I have to create a term that's going to help market it. And there's been no better term than black on black crime. Because when you created that term, you had black people saying, well, damn. Well, you did hit me. You black and I'm black. That's black on black crime. Your little kid hit my kid on the park. We got to stop this black on black crime. Meanwhile, two blocks away, a little white kid hit a little white kid. That's just crime. A white police officer hit his white wife and beat his wife. That's domestic violence, just like right across the street. But that's white people, so that's just crime. That's the best marketing plot they ever made, black on black crime. Because that's a way to keep black people for the last probably 20, 30 years or better fighting against each other under that term. White people kill each other at the same rate. Chinese people kill each other the same rate. Mexican people kill each other the same rate. You get where I'm going? We all kill each other the same rate because it's about proximity. I'm more likely to commit a crime against Stubb because Stubb is close to me than a person that's in the next house. Why is that? Because I have more access to Stubb. Now, if you give uh, Stubb a big plate of food, nice big drink, so so cold that it's sweating on the outside, and then I ain't had nothing to eat for two weeks, it's going to be some crime. It ain't going to be black on black. We both black. This is going to be a crime. Because if you do the same thing with two white men, the same thing going to happen. So what you need to do is give Stalb a little bit less, you know, just a little bit, just a little bit less on his plate, kind of even it out, you know what I'm saying, like even it out a little bit. Give me a low, just a low cup, you know what I'm saying, it can have a low sweat on it, or if, even if there ain't no sweat. It can be hot. If I ain't drinking, I'm thirsty, I'm going to drink that motherfucker. Yes, so I said, just even the plate up just a little bit. And when you do that, you'll realize you got less drama, less people fighting, less things to fight for. I like the fact of uh, James Baldwin. And I keep repeating this because since I started reading on him and started watching the video, he said, I never needed the nigga. He said, the question you got to ask yourself is, why did you? And still to this day, that is the question. I don't know why ain't nobody on the news saying it. I don't know why ain't nobody, period, is saying it. But black people ain't never needed the nigga. We ain't never needed to be a nigga. We ain't never needed one. Never created one. Never had to have one. Now, the question to you, if you are supposed to be, for the people who believe they're superior, mm -hmm. why did you need the nigga? For the people who staying out of it, I don't, I'm not, I, that was my ancestors. Why did you, why did your ancestors need the nigga? Why do you need it now? Because the minute you get mad at a black person, oh. we your nigga. To the rich man who profited off of us building this country for free. Why did you need the nigga? And I'm going to make this whole other category because they did the same thing in the system. Poor white people. Why did you need the nigga? I'll tell you why they created it for you. But why did you need the nigga? Well, the reason why they created it for you was for you to have something to hate other than them. Because I'm white. 
Why I ain't got all these opportunities? Why I ain't doing well? Why I stay in the ghetto? Why am I the white kid in this black school? Because of the niggas. Because of the nigger. They created the nigger so that you can feel better about yourself and not hate them. But you in the same spot the nigger. And if you ever realized that you was a nigger to them, you might team up with that person who you call the nigga and actually go against them. So are you are you saying that what's going on with all the marching and protesting is that you're now realizing we all niggas again? My nigga. Makes sense. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing to see though. Yeah. I mean, I'm not gonna lie to you. That shit just I'm just taking a back. God damn, boy, for white folk. Boy, these white folks ain't playing no Listen, more. Mass time They're tired of the face, shit. Busting windows. Burning my, favorite, down places. my favorite one. I got to meet that fella that scared the shit out of Harv Jacobs. Mm. I got to meet him. That's the thing, man. <laughs> that fella, that's, he spoke the truth, too. That's the thing, man. Like, I listen, as much as I hate it, I love it. You know what I'm saying? I love it because it, it, it looks like what we always seen change look like. Think about it, uh, Selma, and I can only go by the movie. I wasn't there. You know what I'm saying? Goddamn, them people got their ass whooped. But I don't know. All on TV. Yeah. Think about it. All on TV. Them black people got their ass whooped, and then they called for everybody of decency to come march with them. And that's when people really got to look in the mirror and they got to say, "If I really stand for God." If I really represent God, people, whatever God I represent, if I really represent good and not evil, I got to go down there. But man, once again, I must interject, man. None of this, none of this shit would be going on now if it wasn't because of this pandemic and this virus that made people sit home and actually see what was happening. That's a hot take I take from you everywhere. I, I hate to be that guy, but it's the truth. You don't hate to be that guy. It's the truth. Like I told if you, everybody didn't have to sit fucking still, certain people wouldn't have seen what was going on. That's been going on. And what do you, what do you call that? You call that privilege. See, you don't have to watch them channels. You don't have yeah, to, care I don't about have to that watch shit. that shit. But because you bored and you happen to flip on that shit and you see what's see, going oh on. Oh my god, honey, look at that! Oh my god, is this a movie? No, no, no it's real movie. life. And when you seen that shit, it was like, damn. Okay, I get it. I get it. And I've been getting a lot of that from from, from white comrades that I know. Yeah. You know, I have to tell them, man, listen, man, you don't got to apologize to me. Yeah. Don't do that. You didn't do nothing to me. You didn't do that to that listen, person. Help, help, help. That's all you can do. Just bingo. Just help. Help. If you see something going on, speak up. Listen, I don't need no. Don't bring me no casserole. Yeah. Don't you bring. Got to yeah, don't, to me, man. Don't you don't got to do none of that. All I need you to do is recognize that when it's time to vote. I don't want nothing off your plate. You understand nothing. what I'm saying? I don't nothing. want nothing off your plate. I want y'all to really think about this. The these police officers, right? And I ain't going to just go in on police because, like they say, it's good officers. All I'm saying is good officers. They be good officers. Stand up against the bad ones. But I'm going to say this. An officer kills a black person. They go home freely. Maybe they get fired. Whatever. You know, a GoFundMe is raised and they get enough money to live well until they can change professions. You know what I'm saying? That black family was without their loved one, but they get $6 million. That $6 million that they get comes from us, taxpayers. It don't come from the police department. It comes from the budget for that shit, is funded for shit like that when by taxpayers. So here's the thing. You might not have killed Walter Scott since we down here in Charleston, South Carolina. But you paid, you paid for it. his family for his death. Now, for a person who don't believe in reparations, you paying reparations. 
So here's the thing about it. Fix the system. Then you won't have as high a taxes as you have because you don't have to pay one family $6 million because you, and I don't know if that's what they got. I'm just throwing a name out there, so forgive me. You won't have to pay one family millions of dollars because you killed their loved one because the officers won't kill the loved one. They'll arrest the loved one for the crime they committed and that'll be one less incident that costs taxpayers million or millions of dollars. And that helps your bottom line. See, racism don't hurt, help nobody except for the person who's sitting at the top of racism. If you're a poor white person with racism, they just going to fire you and get another poor white person after they get you off that job. They just going to fire you. Oh, we got too much smoke. Uh, somebody got to die on the sword. All right, so we're going to fire you. Then they're going to put another person right in your place. So to avoid all of this stupidness, because you don't need a nigga, get rid of the system as a whole. It don't mean demolish the United States. Just change the laws that's fucked up and pay for what you did wrong. Exactly. That's it. Look at the going rate. Look at what y'all paying these families for the crimes that y'all that these people commit. You didn't commit the crime. These people committed the crime. But you're paying for it. But you're paying for it. So I want you to think about that and think about it in the instance of you didn't own slaves. But you're paying for and we're paying for the crimes that this country committed against a certain group of people. We've done it before. So it shouldn't be a problem doing it again. And the thing about it is, 13% of the people who were affected helped pay into the system that's supposed to give us what we were supposed to get in the first place. You know what I'm saying? So the whole point is like, uh, yo, it's easy, man. It's, it, this is not, it is not a, a, a crazy thing. The, you know, you could change the world by simply doing something simple. And that's really just looking at the situation realistically and doing the right thing. I promise you it won't hurt you. Because if you a shop owner, who going to come in that shop with their money? A black person. If you rent cars, who gonna rent some cars? If you do trips, who gonna take some trips? If you sell cars, who gonna buy some cars? If you sell houses, who gonna sell some houses? If you got schools, who gonna go to college? Every single industry in this country will benefit from you giving to the biggest group of people who spend the most money. So my my only question is why do you need the nigga? I think you can stop. Like, I think the nigga. I don't need a PSA. <laughs> man, listen, man, listen. Y'all need to be careful out here. Y'all are congregating like there's nothing going on, and I've seen it the last few days. Yesterday was ridiculous. I've seen crowds of 40, 50, 60 people. Not nary a person had on a mask. They were in each other's face like it's normal. Listen, it doesn't matter if you're asymptomatic. It doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt you. But if you take that shit into your house with your children or your elderly loved ones, you are going to kill them, period. Jesus Christ. When we're in these stores, no, me and PD don't have a mask on. Why? Because we cool. We know where the fuck we at. But when I bet you this, but when we go outside and we go in them goddamn stores, everybody got a mask on. Because these people out here nasty. It could be, listen, people are nasty, man. It could be people just sick, just going in these stores, coughing and shit, just to be nasty. With no mask on. With no mask on. With that intent. Listen. I was at Walmart yesterday. 
Me and a white lady, mm-hmm. a Karen. She, I know she was a Karen. But guess what? She turned Karen on her own people. Because me and her in the line, and she looks at me, and we're doing our social distancing. She said, sir, you see that? I said, I see it. What the hell make them think they so damn special to wear these people don't have to have on a mask? And she said it loud, too. And she was talking to two other white people that were ahead of us. Listen, these people are taking it serious, that, man. That's what, that's, that's my main thing. Stand for the right thing. Yeah. That's it. We seen um, the white guy was, oh, he was mad. He was hot. Outside of Walmart, Somerville, because mm-hmm. they said you can't come, come in without, without a mask. Right. Oh, he was hot. I drove right past him, parked, put my mask on, walked right past him. <laughs> yeah. You know why? Because I was one of them people who like, I don't necessarily care about no mask. Because I know what a mask does. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like right. It, it, it takes you away from the things in the environment right, that, that keeps you the germs you're supposed that's right. to get. Right. You know what I'm saying? But I can get that shit on my own at home. Right. I don't need to be in a crowded spot with y'all. We was in the store. My wife was like, we, we getting out of the store. Yeah. You know, my wife, my wife, when she get live, she live. Yeah. Why are we getting out of the store? Not because we had everything we need, but because every hour we went on, people was piled. Yeah. Dog, we got and kids. If you got, got anxiety, you we got we, we got to get the fuck on. We got kids at home. Our kids ain't been out and about. The school been closed. Mm-hmm. Ain't nothing open. We ain't even taking them to no goddamn parks. We ain't even taking them to no pools. Right. We ain't even they taking don't, them to no, don't. Ain't no need. No congregation places. So pretty much they've been chilling. You know what I'm saying? So ain't no way in hell I'm going to go to the store. Come back with your germs and give it to them. Ain't no way in hell I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go anywhere with people that I don't care about <laughs> and give them something. Or get something from them. So what we'll make you think I'm gonna go somewhere anywhere with people that I care about and cause them harm? Bingo. You know what I'm saying? So Bingo. so we gotta we gotta be smart about things, man. I do photography and I do photography in people's people's homes for real estate. Master, the only one in the house. Why? Because I don't want you to come in later on that day and goddamn. It's still floating around through there. Yeah, like that shit just don't. Listen, I am. I'm not the type to pretend like, you know what I'm saying, like that germs are just not nowhere near me ever. <laughs> I'm not that stupid. I'm not that arrogant. So you know what I'm saying. I, I understand what you're saying, man. You gotta be, you gotta be careful, man. And, yeah. and I don't think you gotta listen to the news every day. No. Yeah, ten thousand, twenty thousand. Because me and my wife had an argument. That some of these cases is old cases, but people just taking the test now. Yeah. I don't need that to be true. But the whole point is the news trying to tell you like we trying to tell you. Motherfucker, be safe. What's the problem with being safe? What, what's so hard about that? You put on your seatbelt. Now I was at first, I was one of them dudes, man, fuck that mask. I'm going in the goddamn store. And you know, cause I, I have a part-time job where I deliver food. Right. And I just happened upon delivering in a hotel and I was being, you know, I was being black militant stuff. I ain't wearing no goddamn mask. And then I thought about it. I jumped on the fucking elevator after four people had got off and the elevator was hot and muggy. And I just thought to myself, holy shit, I'm in this elevator breathing this shit in. With people I don't know where they from. With people I don't know where the fuck they, they was from. Off the plane. Man, ever since that day, man, I had my mask on, man. Man, man, man it's a lot, man. Praise God that goddamn I didn't get sick. When you think about real life, man, you, you don't think about the amount of people path you cross on a daily basis. No, man. Like, you don't no. think about it, man. And when you really, like, if, if this shit had a color, like if it was like a green fog you could see, You'd be would look at you. You wouldn't come out your house. You would wear a mask with no problem. Mm-hmm. You would wear a mask, tape around that bitch, and goddamn just you know hope for the best. Cause let's be real, these masks is, is them little flimsy ass masks ain't really so, so, yeah. saving the world, but they stopping enough. They stopping some of this shit to the point where it's deemed necessary. And look, you people gonna have to understand. The only way this shit is going to slow down is if either we. Shut back down like before, or at least eighty-five percent of the population get it and 
school. You understand, like, it has to go through the population. What normally happens is it goes through the population. Well, that's what the fuck is doing. You know what I'm saying? But instead, everybody went home and everybody sat home. Now, everybody sat home and motherfuckers was allowed to come in California Mm -hmm. and New York York. Mm -hmm. and bring bring the disease in and just come in with the disease. And now that shit is floating around everywhere. So you can't, the only thing you can do is let a motherfucker live and, and you know, some some people are going to have to die. It's wrapping back up. The question is, is it you and your people that got to die for not being safe? And that's the question that you really gotta ask. And, and, and don't nobody want and, and don't nobody want to hear the the conspiracy theory. Oh man, it's population control, like nine eleven. You know what I'm saying? It's, oh, man, it's bigger than that, man. <laughs> yeah, it's bigger than that. Yep. Ser- seriously, you know what I'm saying? Like this, like a, a certain point, conspiracy becomes stupidity. Yeah, and and it's a certain point where you have to think about what's best for you and your people. Let's say. All this shit is bullshit. But you wore your mask the whole time. Mm-hmm. What the fuck did you lose? Nothing. What did you lose? You know what I'm saying? But let's say, because I know it from my church people, a lot of church people do this. A lot of church people go to church and believe in God just in case what they say is true. True. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, I want to make it to heaven. That's one of the main See, things not, people say. I, I'm not sure. Yeah, you know that. But, but I'm going certain. Certain things might be questionable. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know about that story. But just in case, would it hurt for me to be in here every Sunday for an hour or two? <laughs> Goddamn, you know, praying for yeah, my yeah, salvation. Yeah. yeah. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. It's a lot of yeah, those yeah. types of types of religious people. So yeah, in that yeah, same, yeah, yeah. in that same, yo, what does it hurt? For you to make sure that, you know what I'm saying, you put on your mask to protect yourself as much as possible and your family as much as possible. Hey, and look here, man. Y- y'all don't got to wear your mask in your car. And listen, for y'all dum-dums out there, <laughs> listen, keep you a box of gloves. When Don't wear the same pair of goddamn gloves from the house to the store to the goddamn grocery cart to the groceries. Back in your car, you got the same gloves on. That defeats the purpose. Change them out every time you make another stop. If you're going to wear them. Or be intelligent. Keep your hands sanitized. That's, that's the intelligent way. Another intelligent way is hand sanitized. Jeez. Right now, go in the store. Do your shopping. Put your shit in your car. <laughs> sanitize your hands. I keep a big bottle in my car. Now, when you... St- Sit down at your driver's seat. You're not transferring your driver's seat. Sanitized. Yeah. So driver, you know, you can ride. Now, nah, all right, cool. Boom. Get where I need to go. Take my stuff. Put it up. Sanitize. You dig what I'm saying? Like, you know, because some of y'all are nasty with them gloves. Yeah, man. That, so that, that's disgusting. Get some hand sanitizer. Some of y'all think y'all are supposed <laughs> that's to disgusting. wear the same glove. Hey, all them little blue gloves be looking terrible. They be looking boy. terrible. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I don't wear them shit because I used to wear them shit at work. <laughs> I used to wear them at work touching the hey, So you already know how nasty they get once they get wet. I know how sweat. nasty they get. I know how the cheap ones rip. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, like, you know, I stay away from them. Like, I know how to wash my hands. I wash my hands all the time. Sanitize my hands all the time. If I'm in the store and you in the store and it's... It's a lot of people, or let's say it ain't even a lot of people. More people than I feel comfortable around me, meaning three or more. Come on, wifey, we cutting through the clothes. Yeah. Now, if I cut through the clothes and I happen to pass by you, don't take it personal. I'm holding my breath. <laughs> I'm just being real with you. I'm holding my breath with every interaction that I have with people, even with the mask on. And he, with the mask on, if I'm talking to you, I'm still at a distance. And there ain't no offense. You should be taking the same precaution that I'm oh, taking. Oh, man, listen. The one thing I can't stand is these fuckers. I am so over. Man, listen, man. Don't stand close to me, man. You're going to you gonna, you gonna get all that smoke. Let's see, look at me. You're going to be six fucking feet from me, man. Back the fuck up. I don't like the lines where they got six feet in between, y'all. But you standing right next to the motherfucker beside you, 
What are y'all trying to sell? Like, y'all got 40 lines in here. Y'all could easily do every other line. They could. And still be good. Like, come on, if you're going to solve, if you want to work to solve the problem, like, don't put a Band-Aid on it. Yeah. Actually, do some shit that makes some sense. All right, we're going to use every other line so that way people six feet apart width-wise and, you know what I'm saying, length-wise, everybody got that, that, uh, that distance. distance. And if you do that, then you'd be showing that you really are caring about oh, your customers. There, there's some stores out here that don't play no games. Yeah. I've been hey, in one. Play. The lady been outside. She said, there's three people in the store right now. Uh, what was it? Uh, uh, what's the name of that shit? Not uh, Family Dollar, not Dollar General. Dollar Tree? Big Lots. Big Lots. Oh, boy. That lady was sitting outside. That lady said, um, there's three people in the store. Big ass store. It used to be a grocery store. Now That's it's amazing. a Big Lots. She said, uh, yeah, it's three people in there right now, plus mm -hmm. the workers. We got to wait for two people to come out. Yeah, H&L Market, okay, cool. H&L Market got gloves and masks outside. Hmm. They ain't playing. Don't even come in this bitch. Don't even come in this bitch. Yeah. yeah and I respect that. Look at man. I like them. But boy, the world changing, bro. <laughs> now, there's nothing for a black man to walk in the steps with a mask. Yeah. You don't know who the fuck you looking at now, dude. No. Unless you intimately, unless you know somebody. You don't know who the fuck you looking at. I need I needed some uh some uh diapers because I just found out we need diapers at ten o'clock at night, all right? That's a good question, but I still do. No, it's three. But still, yeah, you shouldn't shouldn't need diapers. But anyway, that's another topic. But anyway, so yeah. <laughs> Only store open is Walgreens. Uh-huh. So, oh my god, I had to go to Walgreens, <laughs> masked up. It's 11 o'clock at night. Oh, what? I'm you thinking to myself, that ain't, they ain't used to that. What? <laughs> yeah, you go. <laughs> you get the police masked call up. Your 11 o'clock at Walgreens? night. Walgreens? Walgreens? Don't let it be the 24 hour pharmacy one. Listen, that's what it was. Oh, the shit. You was going down, boy. It was real, but I felt, I, I felt totally uncomfortable. <laughs> I went, my bank, to I went to my bank the other day with a mask on. <laughs> like, you yeah. see this shit? <laughs> Listen. It's wild out here, man. The world's changing in front of us. Yeah, man. But shit. I appreciate y'all, man. Anything you want to tell the people, man? No, nah, man. Fuck with people. Listen, man. Love y'all. Appreciate y'all listening, checking us out. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and we have more for y'all, man. Y'all have a good one. We out. Peace.